Well, hello everyone. I hope you're having a blessed and beautiful day today. So I just have a short video for you today. I just have some a little bit of encouragement for you and something to kind of ponder on. Um, and that is where does your treasure lie? Where do, where do you hold all of your treasures? Is your heart in the treasures of here on earth or are they in heaven? And I can even ask... Are you heavenly minded or are you praying and hoping that God returns this earth back to normal so that you can continue continue your life as you did before? And I would hope that you're praying not for God to give us more time, but pray for thy kingdom come. And we should be so heavenly minded that we feel like strangers in this place. A stranger that is so out of place that you see the world for what it is and the deceptions for what they are. I hope that you feel so out of place and so heavenly focused that you eat, breathe, and sleep thinking about the home you long for, which is not this earth. Don't put your focus on the things here that are passing away and becoming as decaying flesh don't have your grip so tightly on this world and the desires of your heart in this world that you lose focus of what the word says we need to focus on. It says in Colossians 3, 1 through 4, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. So what does verse 3 mean when it says that you died? Your old self, before accepting Christ into your life, has passed away. That is what it means when it says you died. That person is no longer anymore. But the new creation that was formed from the belief in saving power of Christ, and saving power of Christ, I should say. I saw this quote and I thought it was so perfect because how true the statement is. And it says, heavenly affection. This word actually is describing the thoughts of our mind as well as the affections of our heart. Let's face it. Our thoughts always seem to wander back to the things we love anyways. We know that no matter how much we don't want it to be so, many are going to be left behind. So what can we do in the meantime? We can continue to pray for the lost to come to Christ while there is still time, but don't be so earthly minded that we begin to pray for a reprieve from his coming. I think oftentimes when people say, oh, I don't want Jesus coming yet. I want more people saved. They are truly in their hearts covering up their desire and their honest desire that as long as we keep saying that, the more we can live out our desires on earth and have our grip on the world and everything in it. Though that isn't so in some cases, but if you dig down deep, in the majority you will see that in fact many would rather live for today than be raptured, and it puts a wrench in their plans. What we can do is live out our life so the people of the world can experience Jesus firsthand. That way, if they are left behind, they will remember their encounter with Jesus through us and perhaps will get saved by the very witness we were to them in their lives. That way, for those that are the see-it-to-believe-it kind of people, will believe it because they saw it coming from us. God is holy, God is sovereign, and God is love. He is also righteous and a judge. So let us live according to his will and allow the Holy Spirit to work in and through us in these last moments. Don't be so earthly minded, but be heaven minded and continue to pray for the thy kingdom come because before you know it, it's going to be too late. Are you on the right side of salvation or are you living totally for him? Um, and I want to say also that kind of veering off a little bit from this, um, is, you know, not to get caught up in the deceptions of the church. A lot of times there's um, believers that 
proclaim things that are a pure deception. And I find that many believers are following after these deceptions, believing that it's true when in fact it's not. And then they find themselves caught up in the, uh, the trap of Satan. And then they, they, you know, Satan can grip their mind and Satan is a great deceiver. And so when we have people who are in the body of Christ or in the church, I should say, not necessarily the body of Christ, because the body of Christ is, is a believer. We have many people who are um, proclaiming to be in the body, but they are actually wolves in the body of Christ. And they proclaim things that are deceptions. They believe things that are deceptions. And then sadly, they're leading many in the body of Christ into a deception. And we need to um, be very mindful in watching of these deceptions and, you know, things that are being proclaimed that can't possibly be true, um, that are not biblical, that are not things that believers are to witness or to see. Um, they have been entangled and ensnared in the traps of Satan and into the deceptions of Satan and ultimately um, are leading people down a horrible path of destruction. And so as believers, we need to stand firm in our faith and read our word. And if we aren't reading our word, then we're going to easily be tripped up and easily be deceived. So we need to be um, grounded in our word and know what the word says so that when somebody comes in and says, this is true, or this happened, and it doesn't sound right, we know that it's not biblical. We know that this can't possibly happen. We know that believers can't possibly be seeing certain things that um, people are saying that they're seeing. Um, then we can, you know, kind of push it off to the side and say, well, no, that's not biblical and not follow after the, the false spirits of deception. So, I just wanted to end on that because I see um, not this has not been spoken of from anybody (laughs) as of late. And I think I'm going to um, talk a little bit more about this in my next video. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm surprised to see that not I haven't seen any um, people that are Christians saying that, you know, don't follow after these deceptions from people who are proclaiming to be Christians. Don't do that. Things are that these, you know, they're, they're leading you to leading you on and leading you to believe that this stuff happened and it's, and it didn't. And it's a great deception. So we'll talk about that in the future video. Um, I just wanted to share this little tidbit with you today about ha- being heavenly minded and especially in these end times, you know, it's okay to pray for the lost. We have time and we are called to pray for the lost, of course, but don't, you know, don't hide it with the fact of deep down inside, you're kind of hoping that Jesus doesn't return because you want to do something in the future. You're planning your future out and you're kind of using the, I don't want to, you know, be raptured because I want this person to be saved as an excuse for not praying for Jesus to return. Um, So, you know, we should be, and it even says so in the Bible, that we should be um, watching for his return and we should be excited for his return. So, you know, like I've said in my previous videos, Jesus doesn't need us, okay? He's, He's using us to, for his glory, but he doesn't need us. He is, he is quite capable of getting his word out and he doesn't need us. And so when we get raptured, there's a reason why there is a, um, you know, a synchronization of things that happen. That's why he sends the, the two witnesses. Um, we don't need to be here. There would be no purpose of the two witnesses if we were here to spread the gospel. That's why he sends the witnesses in the tribulation. That's how you can kind of get people who believe in a post-trip or uh, anything, you could say, well, what's the purpose of the, the um, two witnesses and the Jews? If we're here sharing the gospel, then they don't need to be here. Anyways, that's kind of getting off on a different subject. But, you know, I just want you to be encouraged and encourage others, encourage people to encounter Jesus Christ when they see you. Don't be so um, earthly minded that you kind of blend in with everybody and you're, you're no of no use to 
anybody because you're you're part of the world and you are in the world instead of having the the mindset of I'm not part of this world I want nothing of this world I hate this world I want out of this world I want to go home um which is where I'm at (laughs) I don't want to be here anymore I want to go home I'm anxious and I'm ready I'm waiting and I'm waiting to hear those trumpets and I see all of these things happening and I know that it's going to happen but it's like you know when is it going to happen I'm just so excited and eager to go home So anyways, guys, I'm going to leave that with you and look forward to the next video when we will talk about deceptions in the church and things that are being taught and um, spoken of that are deceptions in the church. And many people, unfortunately, are following after it and have even believed it themselves. So I'm going to leave that with you guys. I love you and I hope you have a blessed and beautiful rest of your day.